Today on Vaudon's Weekly, starring Rock Parat, we'll bring in head coach Rock Parat, and we'll talk about our match against Lords University a couple weeks ago. Then we'll bring in sophomore middle blocker Kyle Fitzgerald, and we'll talk a little bit about our season so far. And lastly, we'll bring back the head coach, and we'll preview our matches against Grand Canyon next weekend on Friday and Saturday. All that and more on Vaudon's Weekly. Welcome to Vaudon's Weekly. I'm your host and assistant coach, J.W. Keycaper. With me, we have head coach, Rock Parat. And a quick thank you to our sponsors, Alco, Active Ankle, Asics, Glenbrook Dodge, and Hyatt Place. Well, Coach Parat, how are you doing this fine Tuesday afternoon? I'm fine. I'm well rested. After I'm taking a week off I'm of Vaudon's uh, Weekly. I'm enjoying spring break. I feel wonderful. Feel wonderful. After a week I, off, we've taken a week off. We even took a week off of Vaudon's Weekly. I know. To give yourself a break uh, a little uh, bit from it. Well, it wasn't for me. It was actually for you. Oh, it was for me. Why it was, was it for me? It was actually for you, actually, because of the horrific concussion that you experienced <laughs> in St. Louis a few weeks ago. So there was a lot of concern. I got a lot of letters or emails, I guess, today. I don't think you're going to get a letter. A lot, lot, lot of emails. And uh, so we had to take last week off, but everybody wrote in uh, their concern for your well-being and health. I wonder how that got out to the community. How, of the how are you feeling, by the way? I'm feeling just fine. Okay. You know, I, I, John said I, I should take a couple days off, and it's good to, good to get out. And I pretty much slept all day on Monday and Tuesday because it was so bad. Rumor so. has it you're still seeing stars. I wouldn't quite say. That. I mean, there's a lot of lights in here, so it, well, it's pretty and bright. And you're looking at me. The, well, I do see a star every day in your office, oh, don't I? That is, no, how about right that, it's starring, that starring. That's right. Fort Wayne men's volleyball head coach from Brian Rock for us. Yeah. I'm glad you're feeling better. Well, thank you very much. That means a lot. Glad you're feeling that means better. means a lot. So we uh, we played last week after we took last week off from the show, but we did play a match mm -hmm. out in uh, Sylvania, Ohio, near Toledo uh, against it's Lord University, I believe. Lord's College, Lord's University? No, it's School of College. I think it's University. I feel okay, like it was let's LU. School of the University. Okay. So we played against Lord's, College, an NAIA team in Sylvania, Ohio. I think they're interchangeable here in the United States. I don't know. I really have no idea. And unfortunately, we lost <laughs> one to three. Uh, we came out and didn't necessarily come out ready to play in the first and second set. We had to make a bunch of lineup switches, and we ended up moving Colton Stone, one of our left side hitters all year, over to the opposite spot to, uh, to play the opposite and brought in Austin Nice. Um, off the bench to play his left side spot, and it kind of solidified a little th couple of things in the uh, third set and uh, in the fourth set. Um, you know, when you miss nine serves, I don't think we made too many serves in that in that fourth set. Lost 28-26, but um, just weren't able to stay in that fourth set, and they unfortunately beat us in four sets. In the United States, college and university are interchangeable. I don't know if they're interchangeable. I think there's has yeah. something to do with like the liberal arts education. I feel like if schools have liberal arts Canada, at their universities, colleges but colleges are two years and universities. I feel I should know years. that if if yes. I'm a you know work at a university, but I don't necessarily know the difference between a college and university. College, university, technical, not technical. I don't know. Okay, your question again. Yeah, just talk a little bit about Lords and maybe what happened uh, and what led to our demise in that match. One of the great coaching lessons I've learned over the years, uh, Merrill Hodge. The great Pittsburgh Steeler uh, once said, uh, Chuck Noel, the great coach, or Chuck Noel, uh, coaches have all the power but no control. Yeah. And when you have a team that is flat and not ready to play uh, for whatever reason, uh, it is the coach's responsibility, number one. Uh, and that's exactly what happened against Lords. And I had been saying for months how nice a volleyball team Lords was. I think sixth in the nation for NAIA. At the time they were. I don't know if At they the moved time. up. Um, and they were right for the picking. And so much excitement for them because it was their first home volleyball contest against a Division One opponent. Uh, they did a wonderful job uh, with publicity and, and a nice crowd on hand. And uh, they lived up to the task, and we did not. We were flat from the get-go. Uh, we did not get good performances from a lot of people. Uh, and then, of course, the panic button sets in when you try and change people and bring in new people out of the cold to try and make a, an effect. And uh, we managed to win the third set. Um, but the fourth set, the errors mounted. And we had opportunities. We had looks uh, to push it to a fifth set and maybe get over the hump and escape with the victory. But unfortunately, we did not. And uh, it was a very, very disappointing loss. Probably the Probably the most... Disappointing defeat of the season, I feel. Well, well, you talked about the team maybe not being prepared to start mm -hmm. that match. Uh, how much of that is on them 
for, for not coming out and, and being ready to play and how much of that is on, on maybe on us and not getting them ready to play or, or making sure they're in a prepared mo mode or mood to play and, and being able to perform right away out, out of the gate. How well, much is on them? How much maybe is on us because of that? Well, I think it's all on them. I'll always believe it's all on them, but I don't think that the responsibility falls solely on them. Uh, I have always believed as a coach that it is my job to prepare. I know this was a Wednesday match, but let's pretend this was a Friday match. Mm -hmm. It is my job to prepare Sunday through Thursday. It is their job then to take advantage of the Friday, Saturday opportunities of playing. And then we just manage, we facilitate. That's what I've always believed. Um, unfortunately, in today's era, it's v that's why people argue with me all the time, and they're wrong, about what greatness <laughs> is. Because there are only a handful of great players. What, Ru I keep our, what Russell Westbrook is doing in the NBA is disgusting. Yeah, it it's really is. sickly disgusting. Since 1962-63, the last time this ha phenomenon has happened with Oscar Robertson. He brings it every night. Think about an athlete who's able to bring it every night. I guarantee you the coach does not go to Russell Westbrook and say, Russell, we, because he does it. The ownership is on him as an individual. Now that you're working with younger people, et cetera, et cetera, but I think it's all about the self-motivation. In the end, to, to answer your question, I think it's a 50-50 split. I think it's my responsibility to get the players uh, much better prepared, not just physically, but mentally. Uh, and I'm going to do course correction about that, by the way, the last eight matches of the year, but it's also their responsibility to make sure they take advantages of the playing opportunities because you only have eight, we have eight matches remaining in the regular season before postseason if we make the postseason. What if those are your last eight? No one, you don't think like that. Obviously, I think like that, people go, oh, you're pessimistic. I go, no, but what if? I mean, take a look at, you know, a guy like Tony Price who gets injured his very first match of the year. You know, there's so many things that can play into it. Why not go out and enjoy the opportunity that you're given? It's a 50-50 split. So uh, in relation to that, talk about maybe why we performed well in the third set and maybe why we performed well in the third set, if you can think back. It's been almost a week now oh, since we played can, that match, oh. and we've been off for a little bit. But is, is there is well, something you remember as to why we responded in that third set and played well in the third I set? I think there are three things. Number one, they saw the finish line. Because mm -hmm. they had a lead, if you recall, yeah. in the third set. And they, I think they were up 17, 14, 17, 13. They saw the finish line and they tightened up. Number two, we were playing with our backs against the wall. Mm -hmm. And when you play with your backs, you come out swinging a little more aggression. You did. But number three is we actually executed the fundamentals. We were serving and passing much better on yeah. ball handling. And our offense was pretty good. I think that was the highest set that we hit offensively. So we did some really nice things and combined that into their letdown a little bit. Yeah. That's what got us in. And we played a very spirited four set. The problem in the fourth set is we made the unforced errors. Yeah, I think just too many unforced errors for, for us to overcome in that fourth set, and it led to our demise. So coming up next after the – oh, go ahead. I just – one quick thing. You also want to know what happened on the Wednesday? You had the concussion the week before. I had the concussion on Wednesday at Lourdes. <laughs> it felt like it for a while. Uh, well, coming up after the break, we'll, we'll visit with sophomore middle blocker Kyle Fitzgerald. Uh, stay tuned. I'll have my students in the classroom, and then I have my students out in the clinical area. Education is our thing. We can heal and save, and we can do a lot more with preventive health than you can ever do on the opposite end. I call my students my junior medievalists because that's what I like to think I'm doing is creating the next generation, even if they don't take this for the rest of their lives, they will have this memory of reading Beowulf and reading uh, Chaucer. A lot of people have studied why people start committing crimes, and that's been an interesting topic and researched pretty well, and that's never interested me. But I've always wondered when you want to change or you can change your life, how do you do that? So why and how people quit? One of the great advantages that we have is a small classroom environment help us to engage students with one-to-one, -one. so that helps you to know students better, and that also helps students to know professors better. Welcome back to Volley Dunge Weekly. I'm your host and assistant coach, J.W. Keekafer. With me, we have sophomore middle blocker, Kyle Fitzgerald, from in Illinois. Where, where is he again in Illinois? Uh, Zion, Illinois. Zion, Illinois, close to the uh, Wisconsin border, if so, I'm correct. It's about an hour north of Chicago, hour south of Milwaukee, so right on the border of Wisconsin, Illinois. And Kyle and I feel like we're brothers because we cheer for the same football team. Pretty, pretty... With a lot of gusto, if you will. Pretty pretty hard, right, Kyle? Yep. Go, go Green Bay go. Packers fans. Go Pack Go. Um, 
So his mom and I have a lot of conversations about the Packers, and, and him and I have a lot of conversations about the Packers and how good Aaron Rodgers is doing and stuff like that in the uh, fall when we're not in season, right? Yep. <laughs> and until February. So Coach Rock, as he was leaving and as you were sitting down, we'll just jump right into it, jump right into the hard stuff here, right? He, he goes, I'd love to hear Kyle's answer to that question. How much is it on the coaches for not maybe being ready to play in the first, second set? And how much is it on, on the players for not being maybe ready to play in that first, second set against Lords? Um, so he wanted that question to go to you, and I said, hey, wait, let's put that on the air. Let's talk about it on the air. So, Kyle, to you, what do you think? What do you think that is on, on the players, on the coaches? How much a percentage on both? I think, um, go ahead. I think it was a lot on the players. We made way too many mistakes, a lot of service errors, a lot of blocking errors, a lot of hitting errors, just a lot of stuff that we could have corrected, and we just, just didn't do our jobs correctly. So in the, in the first set, did you start? Or did no. you come off the you came off the bench by the third set, right? Yes, in the third, third set, set you came off the bench. So talk a little bit about how um, that's kind of been a role for you as the season's gone on is coming off the bench in a couple of sets and a couple of matches and trying to make a difference, maybe being down 0-2 or 1-1. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about that spot and coming in off the bench and kind of the difficulties of getting warm and warm ups and then getting all back down to ice cold and trying to warm back up to play again. Uh, I mean, getting warm is definitely one thing. I've had uh, knee problems for most of the season, so getting my legs warmed up and body ready for the to be out there and playing def definitely takes a lot. But, you know, it's definitely nice to be in there, be able to make a difference, try to get us some points, get us some wins. What is one thing that you think you do well? Like Coach Rock brings you off the bench to do this thing, this reason. What do you think that's, that's the reason for? Uh, I think I block pretty well. I don't know. I think that I can close and get a lot of touches, and I think uh, not making errors is something I do well, too, because I've only missed a handful of serves and a handful of hitting errors this season. In, in regards to the blocking thing, I think um, a lot of the times when you, we bring you off the bench, you come in, <coughs> in for Richie Diedrich, um, who's one of our middle blockers, but maybe a little bit younger, doesn't have as much experience as you have in, in the middle. Um, talk about like the difficulty of reading the game as a middle blocker, being able to see the setter and the choices he makes and not going to the wrong location. I mean, it's definitely fast because especially if they have a perfect pass, it's a lot harder to be able to track a middle and also close to the pin. So it's definitely a lot of work, but it's something that we're working on. We're trying to get better at. We definitely can get better at it. I'm just reading and closing blocks and getting to the outside or right sides and blocking some balls. You talk about reading um, and necessarily what, what are you reading in the game? Are you reading the setter? reading the passer, combination of all of it, like exactly what are you reading when you talk about reading? Well, first you try to pick up if, this, if the pass is on the net or off, so figure out if the middle is going to be involved. And if he is, you try to pick up where he's going, if it's going to be tight, if it's going to be spread, to try to get onto his shoulder in case he gets the ball. And then after that, try to read the setter's hands to see where he's going to put the ball, if he's going to go middle, if he's going to back set, and just try to get there and close the block. And in relation to, to more specific reading the setter uh, in his hands, what are some of the things – I mean, maybe sometimes we do it without thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's very much second nature. But what are the things that you can come up with to try to help our audience exactly what a middle blocker looks for just in the setter's hands and, and kind of by the setter's body language? Yeah, some setters more take steps in and lean back when they're going to back set. Some keep their hands in front when they front set. So you just try to pick up to see if, if they're going to set middle, what they're going to do with their hands to see if that's going to be an option. Or if they're leaning back, it usually goes backwards. So try to pick up the little things that they do subconsciously to help give the team an advantage. And I thought our, our middle blockers did a very good job offensively against Lords this last week. Um, why do you think that was uh, from, from that standpoint? I think you hit pretty well. I thought Graydon hit pretty well. Um, Richie, when he was in, I thought he hit all right. So what, what do you think was our advantage in the middle offensively at least? Uh, I think that we just play at a faster speed than they did. So definitely with, uh, I think we had a big advantage in the middle of the court, whether it was the middle or the big over the top. So I think we were able to take advantage one-on-one -on -one for the middles and uh, one on hopefully none for the big. And then, and then conversely, I thought, you know, when we look at the stats, I thought their middles had, had a really good night. Both, mm -hmm. um, both of them actually had a pretty good night. And, and why do you think their middles gave us triple offensively? A lot of the offense on good passing situations was coming out of the middle of the court on yeah. both sides because both, both teams' middles were playing very well. Uh, well, I mean, we didn't serve the ball very well. We missed a lot of serves that you said earlier. So, and when we did make our serves, they ne weren't necessarily aggressive. So if they had a perfect pass, they had a good chance of running middle. And a one-on-one -on -one middle is really hard to stop and really hard to defend. When, when uh, you know, we're taking a look at the scouting report and we're doing video in our team's middles, um, what are some of the things that you look at to try to stop them? Um, 
their angle of approach is a big tell to see if they're coming from left to right where they can hit the ball, if they're going straight ahead, if they rotate their shoulders where they're looking, just to try to pick up where they're going to try to hit the ball and put your hands there and block it. And then conversely, when you go up and attack, uh, how are you trying to score? What are you seeing in front of you? What are you trying to do to try to score? I mean, the, the first thing is definitely the block. You try to see if it's you have one block up or if there's somebody helping, and if there's help, you usually try to hit away from it. But if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you try to see if he's going up straight, if he's diving at an angle, and try to get it around him and find some court, put the ball away. Yeah, it, it's definitely one of those positions that um, gets talked a lot about um, as like a chess match, right? When, when you're trying to dive your hands one way yeah. or the other way, trying to figure out where that other middle is going to swing or where you're going to you're going to swing. Um, talk a little bit about uh, maybe the, the frustrations involved in that or, or maybe the – kind of good moments you get out of that from when you're being effective? I mean, from we played uh, we played some really good middles like uh, Loyola when we played Jeff Jendrick, and that's frustrating all the time because he gets the ball around middles usually. So it's real hard to try to stay in the game and stay on him when he's just killing us. And uh, I mean, it definitely feels nice to put balls away, whether it's um, a hard hit kill or just a deep court shot or wherever it is. It's real nice to try to beat their middle, try to be better than him, put the ball away more than he does, block more balls. How does it feel then uh, when we talk about that chess match when you make the right move, when you, when you see the right thing, when you know where he's going to go and you clamp it down and, and block him you know, straight down, you know, what's the feeling in that situation? I just Adrenaline feels really good to block somebody, get a point for the team, get some momentum. Hopefully we can build on it later on and work our way to a win. One of the things <laughs> that you do when you play and you get a big block is you don't necessarily celebrate a whole ton. You kind of just like look at everybody. You just kind of like walk back at them, all like standing up tall. Like, what, what, is that just kind of one of the ways you celebrate and you expect everybody else to jump on top of you? Or, or where does that come from, I guess? Um, I don't know. It's something I've done. Sometimes I'll kick up a leg. Sometimes I'll get really excited. Sometimes I'll just turn and walk off the net, look at the bench, try to get some energy out of everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely middles celebrate and definitely like very um, like true like because when you do make that play, it's just so, like you said, a, such a big rush of adrenaline and the entire team lo like loves it. A solo block is one of the most momentum switching kind of plays in volleyball or momentum gaining plays in volleyball. So it is really one of those plays where you can kind of celebrate and have fun and know it was all on you because of your great move and your great play. Um, so switching gears a little bit. Um, you're a business major here at IPFW. Yes. What is some of the reasons why maybe you wanted to come to IPFW or what is some of the good things about our business program at IPFW? Uh, I mean, the business program is really good. They have the, uh, an IU degree through the business program and since I'm a marketing major, and IU is really good in the business world. They're top 20 and for business school, so that'll be good. And uh, I just want to be a marketer, like sports marketing, so advertising, mar just all sorts of marketing with the ticket sales. Do you want to go like to a pro, like a, a pro team, a college team maybe doing that? Um, or do you have any idea yet? I'm not sure yet. Whatever whatever comes my way, I'll try to take advantage of. <laughs> whatever whatever floats your way, huh? Yeah, I'll That's just... Ride by the seat of your pants? Yeah, just... <laughs> I mean, I don't really care what sport it is because I like most sports. I'm just yeah. try to market for them and see how, see how it is. See if you like it, huh? Yep. Well, thanks to Kyle Fitzgerald uh, for teaching us a little bit about the middle position, and hopefully you guys learned a little bit about kind of the, uh, the chess game that goes on for the middle blocking position. Uh, well, once again, thanks, Kyle Fitzgerald. We'll bring back head coach Rock Broad after the break. See you soon. I teach a performance of poetry, so we're addressing how to perform poetry as well as how to find poetry. The first thing, when they're in the freshman and sophomore classes, I try to get them to get their voice. They have to have a voice. I always have people coming to me from math and biology telling me how the techniques that I use in poetry help them in, the, in their other uh, genres of, of learning. Welcome back everybody to Volleydance Weekly starring head coach Rock Parada. I'm your host JW Kike for Coach Kyle Fitzgerald. Talk a little bit about him and, and his impact on this program in his short career so far as a sophomore and, and some of the good things he does off the bench for this volleyball team. Okay. And in starting, he started in uh, that Lewis match earlier in the season mm -hmm. did some good things too. Kyle had a stretch. And Linda Wood and Quincy and he started. Yeah, Kyle had a stretch of matches where he didn't make an error. I think it was the, yeah, it was the Loyola Lewis weekend. He didn't make one attacking hey, error. He hit around 600, I think, yeah, that he, weekend. Yeah, I mean, he played tremendously well. Kyle is very cerebral and you need that at the middle blocking position. Um, and he's a big kid, which helps. I think he's our tallest middle at 6'7". 
and uh, I like his serve a lot. I like some of the things that he does off the, off the bench for us, but he's been rewarded in terms of starting as well um, because he's been performing very, very well. Uh, and of course, he'll tell you the very first thing that what he said to you is, I like to block balls, and he's blocking balls. And, and middle, it's a very challenging position. I think Kyle's done a really nice job embracing that position and, and taking it to the next level. He's just, you know, he's got to still work on his game a little bit, still got to work on that agility to make him a little quicker and, and be able to read the play faster. But uh, he's done a really nice job stepping in when counted on. We had uh, Scott McNerney on the show, I think, earlier this season, and we talked how, how good of a teammate he is and how he makes mm -hmm. people around him better. Um, I think sometimes sometimes Kyle can can fall into that same category as a teammate, um, getting everybody pumped up, ready to play. Um, he's kind of that positive energy, that positive mm -hmm. force moving forward for a volleyball team. Um, somebody who's really uh, just kind of has that leadership style, and that's really good for this team with a lot of um, sometimes more intrinsic or internal leaders, and then kind of looking internally. He's kind of the guy who's looking externally to pull people along with him. Part of that has to do with the fact that Kyle is just a loose goose kind of guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's not uptight, really relaxed. I mean, he's a Packer fan. That probably says a lot about him. But uh, I think that uh, that helps on a volleyball team to have that kind of loosey-goosey attitude. And he does, and I think it helps him perform. Yeah, I think I think it really, when, when he gets in, I think it loosens the team up a little bit. Kind yeah. of the same lines as when Scott gets in, it loosens the team up a little bit. They're able to kind of focus more on, on volleyball as opposed to being so internally focused on maybe their errors, they're able to kind of open it up a little bit and, and focus on some other things and be more positive, a little more positive self-talk, yeah. which I think just his presence on the floor brings to our volleyball team. And uh, a good kid, an amazing student in the business department, never had a problem with him. Uh, and I think he's close to, a you know, above a 3.5. So um, just a really good student and a, and a good kid to have in the gym. Concur. Yeah. Concur. <laughs> so uh, I was going to say we could talk about Grand Canyon, but we can talk about Grand Canyon next week. So what would you like to talk about? Anything that anything you want to talk about here? We have this weekend off, uh, a couple of days off. So, you know, what do you want to talk about our volleyball team? So, some highlights, some lowlights, uh, the conference well, standings. Do you want to talk about that? Well, oh, yeah, actually, I think it's a good time to do a little recap since we're at uh, the halfway point of our season. Um, we're currently 2-6 and six in conference play. Um, and as I've said since... 2-5. and 2-5? and five? Yeah, because we haven't played Grand Canyon twice yet. And, and, I've, and I've said this since September. It's unfortunate... Uh, due to uh, Tony Price's injury, the very first match of the year. But I think we've been very competitive this year. Um, you know, we've been in matches that a year ago we would have never been in because of our youth, uh, even though we're sophomores, the majority of us are sophomores, and Tony being a junior who's out. But I think we've been very competitive. We've been in matches that probably we shouldn't have been in. We put ourselves in positions to win matches, just couldn't convert. Um, so the record doesn't really indicate... Uh, the type of team that we are, um, and that's kind of unfortunate because usually you got to look at the wins losses in regards to measuring stuff. But as I told you, I've told everybody that would listen to me, that's not this year. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll come next year with the measuring. I think that there have been some unbelievable individual growths on our team. Um, I think there has been some, it, not just on the court, I'm talking performance, I'm also talking off the court in regards to leadership and team uh, togetherness. Uh, I think some of the disappointing parts have been the fact that we haven't capitalized on those matches that we should have won, and I think that kind of eats away at our players, especially from a confidence standpoint, knowing that they're so close. Um, and I think that has triggered the fact that they haven't bought in entirely yet to the work ethic needed to be a top-tier team. Uh, once we get to that level, I think it'll definitely help. Uh, but you just you got to go through it. It's like the baptism through fire. You got to go through it in regards to what it takes to get over the hump. And uh, I think our guys have really, really done a nice job of uh, being a together team. They're, we really don't have individualisms. We don't have ego. I think everybody's on the same page in terms of let's go out, let's give it our very best effort, and let the chips fall where they may. And and that's been a positive thing. And the future definitely looks bright here. Uh, moving forward, and the second half of our season is going to be so hard. Grand Canyon twice in Phoenix, at Ohio State, at McKendree, and then we're home for four big ones with Quincy Lindenwood one weekend, and then we end up with Loyola and Lewis here. So, you know, I think we have an opportunity to finish as high as sixth, possibly. Um, I, I would like to have that 
possibility. We could probably get up to fifth, but a lot of things have to fall yeah, away. Uh, a lot of things have to fall away. I mean, if we can take care of our business and do what it is that we need to do, I think we can be in a really good spot. You know, last year we only won three conference matches and finished eighth. Yeah. You know, this year I think we have an opportunity at least to get to four or five. Initially I thought seven, but we lost a couple matches that we probably shouldn't have, and that's kind of taken that away. But I still think we can have a really strong finisher going into the Beaver postseason. Yeah, I think Beth and I talked a little bit coming back from Lords. Um, the same way that we talk, a lot of people talk about winning being contagious, right? When you're winning, mm -hmm. everything feels good. You're doing that same work ethic in the gym, or work ethic in the gym, excuse me. Um, you're kind of feeling it, you're grooving it. Um, sometimes the same way, losing can be contagious, totally right? Agree. You start getting into that mental rut of man, that just wasn't enough. Man, are we just not good enough to do that? You start questioning yourself a little bit. You start questioning um, what you're doing in the gym, how you're performing, how you're playing the game. Um, and once you kind of creep into your own head, uh, it I can agree. really, really hurt the way you perform. And I think part of part of our performance, maybe sometimes late in sets, has has been hurt by that. Um, but we, Beth and I talked about it. I think we were eight and ten, and or sorry, ten and thirteen, and five and eight in close matches. So ten and thirteen in two point sets, and five and eight in sets that were overtime sets. So like 24, 26, mm -hmm. 25, 27. Mm -hmm. um, so we're competitive in those where we haven't been blown out in all of them, but we haven't been able to turn that number into our favor. And, and why that's is what, that? That's what good things. That's what good teams do. That's what experienced teams but, do. But why is that? What is the answer to that? I, I mean, if I knew the answer to that, I think I'd be making a lot more money somewhere else. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I hope it's because of the experience you have and being able to grow from that. Um, but I, I really don't know the answer to that. I think that's part of it. I think part of it has to do with maturity, experience. Uh, you know, playing time, all those things. And when you have a, a majority of our group, which are sophomores and freshmen, we only have three seniors on our team, I think that's a, at least a, an indicator of why we haven't been able to fit. The bigger yeah. reason has to do with mental toughness. Yeah, and that's going to be an issue for us just because of the, the way we've lined up. And like I said, losing being contagious, it's tough. So. But you've got to put yourself in there in order yeah. to see the rewards at the end. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all to, uh, for being here and listening to Coach and I uh, talk a little bit. Hopefully you learned some about blocking and learned a little bit, out, a bit, little bit about our season. Um, and thanks to Kyle Fitzgerald for, for being here. Uh, quick thank you to IAB Bank, Indiana Physical Therapy, Molten, O&E, and Pizza Hut. And Coach Rock, you're going to sign off for us today. Huh? I am? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Score more points than your opponent. We'll see you next week. See you next week.